One of life's greatest pastimes is playing party games on the couch and passing controllers among friends. But controllers only reach so far. Sometimes it's hard to get everyone in one place. And sometimes people move away or you make new friends who don't live near you. What do you do when your buddies are farther than you can swing a controller? You use remote play together. A new multiplayer Steam feature that lets you and your friends play party games over the internet together. Now party gaming has never been easier. Simply fire up your game, then invite a Steam friend to join in the fun. It's that easy. Once your pal accepts, boom, you're gaming together. Your friend doesn't even need to own the game or have it installed. Their controllers will act like they're plugged directly into your computer, or you can share the keyboard and mouse. Now all your local multiplayer games are playable online. Check out our growing list of compatible games on Steam and keep the party going with Remote Play Together. Hello and welcome back to the Steam Remote Play Show. It is me, Sir Action Slacks, and we've got more games to play. But first, we have a little something something going on. I got some more guests though. Hello guys, how you doing? Hello. Doing still good. I can't <laughs> wait for the next game. Shaver, is that you? Shaver? Tom's man? Hello? Hello. It's Greetings. almost like in my living room. Yeah. But then you're not. Which is also kind of nice. <laughs> I noticed that you you don't have USA under your uh, your your country tag. California is your country. Oh Congratulations yeah. Congratulations on that, Shaver. Thank you. <laughs> California. Yes. That's what's most important in this world. Uh, we don't go by, I don't even know where California is. I just know it's America. But That's if you're also looking more. at the length, it's like West Covina, Cal. Wait, True. you're not. Oh, wait, you don't have your state. I ah. do. I don't have my city, just state. Oh. State. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very sad day for Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, coming up next, uh, I believe, if I'm correct, we are going to not go into a game. We have a Ooh. special opportunity. We're going to do an Ask Me Anything live with stream that is on okay. the chat right now. And uh, we have a very special guest, a friend from Devolver Digital. We have two of those games uh, in our show today. You guys already saw one, which was Heave Ho. We have another one coming up in a little bit, but I'll save that for later. So it's a surprise. But for now, how about we check in with our special interview from Devolver Digital and do a little AMA for a bit. Yeah. Good lord. I'm Jay Magic Mayhem from Devolver Digital. I'm here under witness protection <laughs> services. Um, just to be clear, this is not to be publicly broadcast in any way. Everything I say here is completely confidential. Okay, we definitely well, are not very streaming scary. in We're any not way. We're broadcasting this right now. No, it's a completely safe, secure, <laughs> encrypted connection. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. All right, so uh, we are here to let to ask you some questions. We want to get the scoop, Mr. Yeah. Guy. And these answers, again, will not go anywhere. We are asking all the questions ourselves. No one is watching. Yes. Everything is completely normal. So sounds good. All right. <laughs> anyway, start with the questions. I'm going to do something completely uh, unrelated. Before, we, this is the message, Jim, that you're just ignoring for a second. Again, we are not having anybody join us. But for people that are joining us, there's actually, if you haven't seen it, there's a button that says you can chat. So if you have any questions yourself, we can actually read the chat and we can ask your questions as well. My question is regarding Heave Ho, how much do you guys play that in the office? Because that game is addicting. We don't have an office. We are decentrally, we are completely decentralized at Devolver Digital. It protects us as individuals and it protects the institution as a whole. <laughs> However, with the new remote play uh, functionality of Steam, we are hoping to be able to uh, engage in some more quote-unquote camaraderie and team-building quote-unquote exercises. So the productivity wow. will go down and the <laughs> fun will go up. Shame Ideally, up. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain to everybody what Devolver Digital actually is as a company, as an entity? Devolver what do you guys Digital, do? We are a publisher of video games, independent video games. They're created by small teams, anywhere from one to 100 people. Really, 100 is the most we're willing to deal with. Uh, it's harder to silence larger teams. Uh, people ask too many questions. We... Uh, yeah, we publish video games and we profit from the hard work of others. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being so open. Uh, I'm sure if anyone heard this, 
they would be very disturbed, but luckily it's still between us. Thank you very much. I appreciate your, I appreciate your discretion. <laughs> so no as worries. somebody, uh, a publisher, um, you have go through a lot of games. You get to meet a bunch of different game devs who make stuff. Uh, just interested in what uh, some of your favorite titles are from uh, under your guys' umbrella. Omnibus, Omnibus, Omnibus. <laughs> One of what? the best games ever created. I know you haven't heard of it because, well, you just haven't. Uh, Whoa, I've heard of Omnibus, but continue. Please, then I'm, I'm very excited. It's it's one of the most beautiful stories ever told. <laughs> uh, and now with the remote play, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for people to enjoy sumo wrestling with uh, with buses. Fantastic. Sumo wrestling with setting. buses. So, There's uh, also Greece, which is high art, uh, beautiful, that sort of thing. The Talos Principle. There's, there's too many names. Too many <laughs> games to name. Forgive me. Mm. No problem. And what what is what is your role specifically within the company itself? Oh, Executive this... Director of Counterintelligence Operations at the Department of Digital Entertainment, <laughs> subsidiary of Fort Parker's Illegal Happy Fun Time, Cayman Island Offshore Holdings, hashtag crimes. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a short one. That's Does easy. that That's fit not... on a business card, though? That's the real question. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're business pamphlet cards. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so I know, like, we're not broadcasting all of this, and everything you say is confidential and all that. But if it wasn't, what would you like to tell people? What would I like to tell people in general? Yeah. What is your message of, to the world? Buy our shitty games. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very Thanks unique forward. message out there. <laughs> and how, how do you, from Devolver Digital, how do you guys differentiate, differentiate yourselves from other publishing companies? Do you stick to a certain type of uh, game title, genre, anything like that? Or is it is it the counterintelligence unit that's really behind the company? We, I think one of my favorite things is that people try to sort of narrow down Devolver Digital into one type, the, the most common being um, pixel art or hyper-violence, which is, I think, uh, I think this is a lot of the other games that we do. Dropsy is, well, yes, pixel art is actually a, a point-and-click hub venture. Uh, the Talos Principle has gorgeous graphics. Shadow Warrior has beautiful graphics. This is, again, a heartwarming game. Uh, it's incredibly touching. Uh, Heave Ho, as you played earlier, a lot of fun, very warm. Uh, I think if there's anything to be said, it's uh, it's that there's a certain subversiveness to the games. If it's, uh, it's it's they're generally not what you what you get at first glance. Yeah, and they're actually really good too. I'm, I'm a big fan of a lot of the things in your category. Stuff like Enter the Gungeon is surprisingly deep, even though it has like that pixel art style. Uh, Dropsy is the most terrifying and horrible game I've ever played. By the way, I mean it's great. <laughs> Everybody should buy it, but it is abs. You uh, there's a you star as a clown, a disturbing, creepy clown that walks around being terrifying. So uh, <laughs> check that one out, but uh, don't ever tell anyone that you played it because I will think less of you. That is a terrifying game. But anyway. <laughs> So can I can yep. I just bring up another game that it doesn't matter how many times I play it just the the animations and whatnot make me laugh every time and it's Gorn the virtual reality <laughs> game can you uh, what what are you game in virtual reality <laughs> yes it's, it's definitely yes. up there what what are your thoughts on virtual reality in general are you guys going to do more games you think uh, publish more games in VR it really depends on what comes our way. Um, and what we find out in the world, uh, you know, VR is tricky because not everybody has it. And for independent, uh, developers and for an independent publisher, there's uh, a little more risk involved. Uh, and so really we have a pretty full plate these days. So yep. to, to book a game or to, to sign a game really needs to shine. Mm -hmm. uh, really needs to, to sort of stand out to us and, and capture us uh, in an exciting way. So we have a we question have a, here yeah. in our chat. Um, it is, why can I not beat Enter the Gungeon? Uh, do you have any <laughs> answers to that? I don't know who Chad is, but he needs to get good. <laughs> okay, get good. <laughs> um, but real Gungeon tip is to uh, focus on where you're shooting uh, and try to avoid without dodge rolling as much as possible. That is not... You got a dodge roll? What are you talking 
Okay, you do have to dodge roll, but oh. dodge rolling has a, a specific amount of distance that you're going to travel. It sort of locks you in, so you dodge roll when you have to. I um, see. Don't, don't panic if roll. You can, yeah, uh. don't panic roll. If you can sidestep a bullet, do that. Uh, or, you know what? I said that backwards. It's actually about dodging the bullets, and you just shoot and trust the auto aim to help you. All right. <laughs> that sounds nice. a little better. Thank you. Uh out of, out of the games that you guys have published, has there been any game specifically that you've been surprised by the reception being perhaps exceeding expectations? Is there any game that just is clearly that thing that pops in your head? Personally, my friend Pedro was oh, just an yeah. absolute knockout hit, and it really actually exceeded everyone's expectations. We thought it was good, but wow. Yeah, Pedro was a great game. That one is uh, a lot of fun, surprisingly. Yeah. Didn't that that originated as like a Flash game on Newgrounds or something? I think it, it was originally a Newgrounds game, yeah. and we uh, we picked it up from from uh, from Dead Toast, uh -huh. and he developed it into a, a full thing. And can I just say, Popcorn, you are absolutely correct. Downwell is a perfect game, like, and I mean that without hyperbole. Downwell <laughs> is a perfect. game game it is absolutely perfect in every way wow that's a game i've it, actually not heard of before so i'll check that one out down you gotta well? play down well it's I'm extraordinary down. down well it's very simple i think it's something like two dollars <laughs> it's uh, a party so game it is not a party game it is a single player game okay but it's a terrific game i i i have a somewhat serious question i just always uh -oh. wondered well, it's not that serious, uh -oh. but as a publishing company, do you guys ever, what's the best way to put this? Here we do go. you ever impose your will on a game? <laughs> do you ever like tell them, we need it done this way, you guys need to change this? Do you ever have any say in the creative aspect of the games? Ever? We, we try to have, it's a balance. So we... <laughs> First of all, fan. So Good yes, is all of our, <laughs> no, well, all of our, uh, all of our um, developers retain their intellectual property rights. Yep, and they all. Um, <laughs> Why, Sorry. Sucks, fan? It was Sorry. Sorry. I asked the best question no, tonight, guys. Just, <clears throat> um. So we they they retain intellectual property rights and they um, you know we don't influence the creative decisions their creative decisions are their own um, but as years have gone by we have learned to um, to keep to keep the um, to keep the momentum up so we, we yeah. do things we we have publisher or not, we have producers on our team that help keep teams on task uh, so that they don't get lost sort of in the in the wilderness of game development. Um, mm. because that has caused us some problems in the past. And then there are teams that we just sort of work with um, without any worry. Uh, Free Lives is a team that delivers hit after hit. Pro Force, Gorn, oh, we almost have to oh. pull out of genital jousting, but then we managed to stick the landing. Oh, uh, genital yeah. jousting. I really wish we could be playing that today, but that's a little too adult for our yeah. kids watching at home. <laughs> the you know, we had the very first Steam uh, stream the very first large Steam stream for uh, a game launch was Genital Jousting, oh, the right. Esports, really uh, yeah. uh, the International Esports Competition uh, that we hosted. That's great. So in the oh, process of, of publishing games, do you guys, do you get to judge if you're going to publish the game when you have only the concept? Do you get judge it when you're already able to play it? Like, what is the process like for actually from a game from start to finish in terms of publishing? So as a publisher, we, if someone comes up and says, hey, I have an idea for a game, uh, that doesn't do us any good. Uh, okay. We are not a developer. We don't have developer resources. Um, generally, if it's someone we've never worked with before, uh, there really needs to be a game, a vertical slice. They need to have, um, they need to be able to show that they have a concept that is unique, interesting, um, that they are able to execute that. And, um, sorry, I keep getting messages. Uh, able to execute People are just messaging you, stop, yeah. stop! <laughs> I mean, like, my life is in danger. Uh, which is fun. But yeah, so now if it's someone we've worked with in the past that we have a relationship with, we don't necessarily sign something at the concept stage, but 
Um, again, there are developers we've worked with and we know and that we trust, and we uh, yeah, we're we're pretty much on board from the get go. All right, um, right. Like minute uh, from those from those kids uh, is is something that you know we were pretty much on board with from the start because we've worked with them before. Same thing for uh, anything free lives. Too. I'm gonna ask you, Tuffy. Has develop? Have you guys ever killed someone as a company? <laughs> what? Just assassinated oh. someone? <laughs> like physically? You mean like as a team? Like all of us got <laughs> together and killed a person I'm together? Saying, a lot, a lot of companies these days do some real co dark so corporate. So once shit. a year we do get together for um, the Devolver Digital International Summit, and we have team building exercises like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> the standard corporate stuff. <laughs> Is I that a way to haze the new employees or something <laughs> like that? I don't understand. Hazing generally implies that uh, that you're making someone do something they don't want, like give to charity or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We we like to give people the opportunity to just kill. Just go wild. Makes sense. You know? yeah. I think uh, I heard I read that that was uh, the inspiration for you guys' this new game, Carrion. It was actually just uh, hanging up that stuff around the office or something. So uh, that's great. Darian is, is very interesting because that game came to us through. Um, so one of our uh, one of our core members, Nigel Lowry, died in 2015, and then last year came and approached the remainder of the team and told us that he had been to another realm. And, uh, <laughs> It was after negotiating that we, we recognized that he had been filled with a sentient spaghetti-like substance. <laughs> and uh, it was a really wonderful opportunity to to to, to get, get, in, get in bed with a new IP. As a <laughs> That's interesting that your contracts actually still are not null and void after going to another realm. Or it must be some airtight contract. Yeah, this is our dimension. Uh, <laughs> So it's all, it's all legally binding here, and that's gotcha. what's most important. When, when okay. <laughs> all right, we got a, a serious question for you. Uh, uh, that's even more serious than murder and death. Uh, that is, <laughs> what is the biggest difficulty in advertising indie games uh, that focus on gameplay elements and have are unique rather than these big AAA titles that are coming out? Hmm. Uh, that's challenging. Uh, yeah. So how do how do we how do we advertise games with unique gameplay aspects? Uh, I think a lot of that is um, sort of solved through the new medium of streaming. Um, so first of all, we do you know advertise games. You want to show gameplay in your trailers and your early stuff, and you want to talk to people about what uh, you know what the game is, what the game has. But streaming uh, is a is a is a good opportunity to sort of get people connected and kind of show how the game works. Uh, we do live streams ourselves at twitch.tv slash the digital, and we will do them uh, here on Steam as well. Yes. Uh, for game watches, uh, just sort of let people know how the games work. But it, it's hard in a trailer to sort of give an idea of what makes gameplay you, like how a game feels. Ape Out, for example, is on sale right now, 50% off mm -hmm. uh, on Steam. Yes, smooth that was. No one's listening, as you told us. No one's listening, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you three want to go and, and buy it right now, no, it's thank you for off on Steam. Thank uh, you. That game, visually stunning, musically stunning. What's great is it feels really good gameplay wise. Uh. It's very uh, tactile. Um, but like Carrion, maybe maybe what brought that question up because it has such a control scheme. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to um, it's really hard to to get that across. Um, in a trailer or anything like that. So you just sort of, we also do a lot of the shows, PAXs, uh, et cetera, where we give people an opportunity to get hands on with the games uh, and see them. Yeah. Uh, if you guys uh, in chat aren't, uh, you know, aware of Devolver, like I am a huge fan, definitely go check out some of their videos from like E3 and PAX. And you guys do such an amazing job for <laughs> advertisement. It is so disturbing and hilarious. It I is. absolutely love it. Almost as disturbing What's as you. What's funny about it? Nothing, nothing, sir. It's all <laughs> very serious, very good. And by you guys, of course, I did mean Sheever and Sons fan. Yes, of <laughs> course. Thank you. So informative. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So, other... go ahead. Sin since we're, talk I mean, we've been doing Steam Remote Play all day, I want to hear the thoughts of from somebody from Devolver Digital on what that brings to some of your games and if there's going to be more games added to the, the library. 
Well, it's really exciting because um, net coding is a bitch, and <laughs> a lot of our teams are small developers. So, in the dungeon, for example, people repeatedly wanted um, non-local co-op. They wanted to be able to play with their friends online. And the Gungeon is a four-person team with contractors. Uh, they're excellent programmers. They're excellent developers. They're absolutely wonderful at what they do. And none of them felt confident in being able to do the net code. You really don't want to have a game that's an excellent game and then have net code that doesn't live up to it. You don't want to have to deal with, um, you know, with, with clunky onlineness. And it's a really hard thing to do. It's not... There's, there's sort of this um, mentality that everything is point and click, even you know, in this day and age, that you just go, oh, add, add online. <laughs> and that's simply not the case. Uh, so it's, it's really wonderful for independent developers to have the opportunity to have their games experienced like, with online multiplayer without adding. I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible workload to, to add to a game. Right. And if you can have a better game without, I mean, it would, yeah, it's a good opportunity for indie devs. That's great. Okay. Well, I have one more crazy question for you, but you guys have any more that you want to wrap up with? I have one final question. Hit it. Because I know that there's so many people out there that always ask, oh, how do I get to work in the esports industry? They ask uh, us, but uh, they ask, also, people like, how do I get to work in the games industry? But then they're not actually able to develop games or do the, 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 the creative and the actually making of the game part. How do you do what you do? Like, how do we get your job? I am a parasite. <laughs> oh. I don't actually do anything. Uh, okay. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's good life advice. I think a lot of people from our chat will be able to follow that one through. I know myself, my parents were all parasites as well. <laughs> all right, so we're all gamers here. We play a lot of games. I want to ask you, worst game you've ever played? Don't don't name a Devolver Digital title, but you don't have to. What, what goes back? Game. Worst game of your entire worst life? Game I've we're going to flame played. somebody here. Uh, hmm. I mean, off the top of my head, Fallout 3. Okay, that is just Ooh. not true. Ooh. That is just not <laughs> true, and you're trash. just wrong. You're no, the trash. Plot, the plot was just somebody like read a cliff notes of Fallout's 1 and 2, and they were like, oh, we'll get a geck and make a water okay. cleaning system. And then at the <laughs> end, you have like you have to go into the reactor right, now you're and like, you're gonna now you're die. Spoiling on top of it. Fuck anybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you have a you have a super mutant with you who's immune to radiation, and you say, "Hey, you go in and turn off the thing." And the super mutant's like, "No, this is for you." And it's like, great writing, dipshits. They fixed that in the DLC. Okay. Thank oh, you. thank God. <laughs> Did they, did they fix the fact that super mutants are infertile, were only on the West Coast, and for some reason there's just like armies of super mutants in Washington, D.C.? Like they're just orcs. Out it almost Vegas. like they're just yeah. orcs. All right, you know what? <laughs> barely, there are right. barely any You're super very mutants right. in Fallout New Vegas. There's a limited amount of super mutants in Fallout New Vegas. They're voiced by, the, the, the lead one is voiced by Michael Dorn. He shows up in right. Fallout 2. Cut it's him like, it's, it Cut makes him sense. Off. He's done. It We're done. The interview sense. is done. Thank you so much for your time. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Where can we find you? Literally, what address are you at? Um, <laughs> Give me your twitch.tv slash Devolver Digital. Okay. Uh, we are we are again non-localized. Uh, you can follow at Devolver Digital on Twitter or at Devolver JM. And uh, did you need more than that? No, I mean, you sell out as much as you want, Digital. man. Go nuts. I think that's all I have. What's the Twitter for Fallout? That's the real question. No, that's uh, that. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that's so. Worlds. It's actually perfect that you brought that up because I know that Slacks is really that that just pokes the bear right there. That is his one true love outside of the Valve universe. 
Uh huh. Well, after seventy six, <laughs> uh, that hurt a lot. So uh, don't worry about it. All right. Thank well, you, I everyone. When your poll line is what you care about, then you don't care about the best poll line. So right, just shut up. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. That was a lot of fun, uh, everybody. Jay Hemp from Devolver Digital. Thank you for your questions, everybody, and thank you for your thank time. You. Check if anybody out. sees this, we will sue you into the fucking stone age. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> No one will ever see it. It's all good. And make sure to follow Developer Digital. They got a ton of great titles on Steam that uh, some that you've heard of, some that you might not have, but you should check out all of them. Uh, for now, I'm going to kick you two suckers out here. We're going to watch a video, but I'm going to play one of my favorite Devolver Digital games ever made, Enter the Gungeon, with a very special guest. So watch the Steam little video, and we're going to play some Gungeon, baby. Get the hell out of here, Sheever and Sons, man. Okay, bye. Bye.